Hi there, Steve Kaufman, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I learn Russian. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell to get notifications. So, I was about 60 and my approach to language learning had always been that you shouldn't focus on grammar. Uh, you need to get used to the language through lots of listening and reading. I had done that with Chinese, with Japanese. You need to get used to the patterns of the language and not focus on the itsy bitsy details of the language. And people said to me, that will not work with Russian because Russian has very complex grammar. So that became a bit of a challenge. Uh, and also I had always enjoyed, you know, reading novels of Russian literature in English when I was young. So I thought it would be cool to be able to read uh, Tolstoy or Dostoevsky in Russian. So with that, I started learning Russian. I began, at, at that time, Link was very much in a sort of rudimentary stage. It would take us three, four, five seconds to save an individual Link. But I started, obviously, you know, not having a full-fledged program at Link. I bought books, uh, colloquial, uh, teach yourself, living language, listen to those, read them. As soon as we had certain things that I could do on Link, I started doing them. Evgeny, who is a great supporter of Link in St. Petersburg, created a lot of great content. Uh, as soon as I could, I started into, uh, you know, audiobooks, and I'm going to give you a brief view. In fact, if you look behind me, you'll see I stacked them up to have a look here. You'll see some of the uh, DVDs, some of the videos that I watched, some of the CDs that I listened to. The DVDs initially was more to, to stimulate me and encourage me. The CDs was more for listening. I did a lot of listening. Uh, in those days, uh, we weren't yet able to import, you know, from YouTube and so forth, but we were able to import some of the classics, just the text into Link. And then I would listen to the audio. And in fact, I'll, I'll give you a brief sort of view of my profile with Russian. And you'll see that I began in 2007, more or less, and that I had a period of significant activity, which then tapered off. So first have a look at that. I'm looking at my profile and I get to my profile, by the way, by clicking on my uh, image here and then going to profile. And you'll see that I started learning Russian in 2007. That's a long time ago. This is my hours of listening. Not accurate because most of my listening through, the, through this period has been to CDs, watching movies, listening to Echo Moskvi, and I'll get into more detail on uh, what I did. If I just look at my activities on Link, if I look at my links created, you'll see that I've been active over a long period of time. Even recently, I go in occasionally and read an article on link and create some links. So my known words total has grown in this fashion. I don't know when we were starting with link, there were some issues and I ended up with some negative numbers, but that gives you a brief sense of how long I've been at Russian. It has been a major love of mine. And so I want to get into some detail about that. All right. Now, the first um, audiobook that I listened to was Kreutzer, Kreutzer of a Sonata by Tolstoy because it's short. And in fact, I have it here. Okay. And I listened to it. I didn't really understand it, but I was able to import the uh, text because it's all, you know, free of copyright. I worked on it at Link. I did Chekhov. I did a lot of the classics of Russian. I can remember being in a place called Silver Star, where in fact I was training to ski in the Vasalopet in Sweden. And I was, you know, out there cross country skiing three, four, five hours a day while listening to Chekhov, listening to Tolstoy, listening to um, other classics of, of Russian literature, go back to my room, look up words. Link was very slow, three, four, five seconds to save each word, but I was determined. Okay, so that's kind of where it began. Uh, some of my favorite, um, you know, DVDs, uh, for example, Sabachi Serce, 
Uh, although my all-time favorite was Gestoki Romans, which to me was the ultimate exotic Russian experience on the Volga, 19th century, uh, some guy from Georgia, and so forth. But there's a whole bunch of them. This is another great one. You know, this was Ironia uh, Sudbi, which is a classic in Russian. In Russia, they watch it uh, apparently every New Year's. Uh, I got into some of the uh, some of the more modern ones, but I find that the modern Russian there's also Brach somewhere. Uh, here we have, but um, the modern Russian movies are a little more violent. The old Russian Soviet movies, you know. Uh, here we have another one. Th th these were great. They had a, a got to get my glasses on. Moskva says he whatever. And so that was that. However, another major, and, and I'll give you a bit of a tour now, then maybe, of my library. Uh, I did want to give you a little bit of an overview of some of the material that I have used for my Russian. Here, for example, Atsi Dieti was one of my favorites. I listened to it over and over again. Uh, the same is true of Yama by Kuprin. But these, of course, were later on. The very first, let me see, the very first audiobook that I did was um, the Kreutzer Sonata, Kreutzer of a Sonata by Tolstoy. I did the whole Asimil series, but of course, as I'll show you when I get to the books, that was only one of the um, ser you know, learning materials that I used. Uh, of course, I watched a lot of Russian videos. I went and got some of these DVDs just to display them here for you. Uh, one of my favorites was Sabachi Serce, you know, Vaina uh, I mean, I could go on and on. My favorite was Gestoki Ramans, which I wasn't able to find in a hurry here. These are some of the CDs that I listened to, um, you know, and I have only displayed some of them because I've got a whole bookshelf full of these CDs. So that's just the sort of DVD CD uh, section. When I say listening and reading, I include reading. So I have a lot of books here in Russian, including books for learning Russian and books for me to read in Russian. And uh, I'm sure I have others elsewhere in my library. Of course, it's a bit messy here. We're doing work in the house. This is my Korean section, my German section, and so forth. Uh, at least of my uh, CDs, because the DVDs, the movies, were more to, to encourage and stimulate and motivate me, and it was fun, but the learning was from listening to the audiobooks and then reading them on link and saving words and phrases and accumulating this total of 90,000 some odd known words, granted in you know the way there are so many different forms of the same word, you can't just start beating your chest and saying, I know 90,000 words. But it indicates that I've done a lot of, of reading and where I've read, I've largely listened. But a major impact on my Russian learning, uh, aside from the tremendous help I got from Evgeny and other tutors, there was a while, I should have shown that in my statistic, uh, there was a while where I was doing a lot of talking as well, because I mean, we're talking about a long period of engagement with Russian. So perhaps two years I didn't speak. But then for another couple of years, I'd be on talking to Elena, to uh, Evgeny, to other tutors, number of tutors that I had, link tutors, and, and speaking and learning about Russia and learning Russian. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, um, but w w a major influence was Echo Moskvi. Now, Echo Moskvi is a radio station in Moscow, not very popular in Russia because it's somewhat anti-regime, although, in fact, there's quite a wide range of opinion there. They have, like, you know, Zuganov, the communist is there. You've got uh, uh, Prokhorov, I can't remember. It's been a while now. I haven't been listening to it for a while. But you have, there's this imperialist guy, and they have a, a sort of a, a wide range of opinion. I wouldn't call them moderate in any way. They're all very, you know, emphatic in what they have to say. But if you listen to a, 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 a group of these people, you get a sense of what people are talking about in Russia. The big advantage of Echo Moskvi is that every day there are, I don't know, a dozen interviews, audio with text. So every day 
I would import the text into link. I wouldn't bother importing the audio because I would have that on my uh, you know, iPhone or whatever, but I'd go through and mine it for words and phrases. I mean, I did that for years. Every day I would load up with five interviews. I'd be listening in the car, listening everywhere, reading. Echo Muscovy was a major uh, influence on me developing my Russian. Now, Russians get on and say, ah, that's, uh, you know, <laughs> they're all uh, American stooges and blah, 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 and whatever. But uh, in fact, it's, that's not quite fair. There is a variety, but as with any uh, information source, you have to pick and choose, and you can't just accept things at face value. And I don't accept everything at face value that I hear on Echo Muscovy. However, it helped me a great deal. So, so basically, my experience with Russian was one of discovering, first of all, the classics, because there I was able to buy, I went to Riga, Latvia to buy all of these, all of these uh, CDs. I got lots of them, which you don't need to do now because you can find them online. Uh, and I bought all these DVDs, movies, which you don't need to do now because you can find them in Netflix, you can find them in, in YouTube. Um, and, and so I was exploring that aspect of Russia, but at the same time, through Echo Moscow, I was exploring daily events, Russian perspectives on things happening around the world, um, Russia-US relations, Russia-Ukraine relations, Russia-China relations. And so I was getting a, a, a rather broad base. The other thing that Russian did for me is it got me into the Slavic languages. It was my first Slavic language. And of course, yeah, it is difficult. It is difficult because there are many things in Russian that we don't have in English. We don't have, uh, you know, we're verbs of motion. We don't have cases. We don't have, uh, uh, you know, aspects of verbs. Uh, a lot of these things. And, and you can read the explanations over and over again. But, and they're kind of helpful, but the explanations are not that difficult to understand. Except that there's so many exceptions that you can get confused. But it's getting developing these habits, these patterns of speech that they have in Russian, which are different from English. And that just takes a lot of exposure. And even at that, well, as I've been away from Russian, of course my Russian uh, deteriorates, I make more grammatical mistakes, I search for words. But again, if I get back into it, if I'm with Russian people, I hear how they speak, I pick up on how they speak, I start to refresh, you know, the habits that I have you know, lost and acquire new and better habits. So I'm comfortable with where I am in Russian. But Russian is, uh, because I don't have to write exams in Russian, I just have to enjoy the language. But it was also the door into other Slavic languages. So uh, after Russian, I learned Czech because my, father, my parents were born in uh, actually the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but what became Czechoslovakia. And uh, my father has you know, scrapbooks at home of where he climbed mountains and did a whole bunch of stuff that was in the newspapers and now I'm able to read it so I learned Czech. Czech was a long road by the way. And then from Czech I did Polish and then I did Ukrainian and uh, a little bit of uh, Slovak which is very similar to Czech. So it opened up the whole Slavic world. Uh, so it's been, to me, it's been a, a love affair with Russian uh, a voyage of discovery of Russian, of, of the Ruski Mir, the Russian world, but also the Slavic world. So uh, just a quick uh, summary, I hope that's helpful to you, of how I learned Russian. Bye for now.